Welcome to the Nightclub guys, it's your host the Night Wrencher. I've been asked to make this video a bunch of times so here it finally is. This is going to be the top 5 welders that you should buy if you're a new person getting into welding. To start things off we're going to set a couple of ground rules of what we're looking for in a welder for a novice welder. The number one thing that we're going to look for is two dials up in the front. There's a plethora of different welders that you can buy from Harbor Freight, Amazon, etc. that only have one dial in the front. What it does is that it controls your voltage as well as your wire speed at the same time. So if you want to only increase wire speed, you're unable to. So the best thing to do is when you get a new welder, you want to make sure that it does have both dials, one for voltage, one for amps, or one for voltage, one for wire speed. And that's going to make things so much easier when you're trying to weld different types of materials. The second ground rule is that all of these machines have to be 110. 110 means that you can plug it into any regular house outlet in the United States and you should be able to start welding. A novice welder typically doesn't have 220 readily available or at least not available in a lot of areas that you can go ahead and start welding. Plus the 110 machines are a lot more versatile. You can use extension cords with them. You can do a bunch of stuff and it makes life a lot easier. So there are some machines on here that are double voltage but we're going to ignore the 240 volts. We're only going to look into the 110. So to start things off we are looking at the Vever MIG welder machine this is 130 amps this is a three in one it just happens to be MIG TIG and probably stick and I would probably ignore the fact that it's a TIG and a stick welder you could probably when you get the package you can probably put that stuff away and only focus on the MIG stuff the reason for that is because you're gonna need to buy a regulator you need to buy some hoses you need to buy a gas bottle it gets really expensive when you try to do any kind of weld process that requires gas. And so in order to avoid that, we're going to be ignoring anything that says multi-process. We're not going to ignore the welder itself, but we're just going to ignore the supplies. So this machine does have two knobs in the front. One's for voltage, one's for amperage, or one's for voltage, one's for wire speed. This machine also comes with a couple of basic tools to start welding. I'm going to go ahead and ignore any of the accessories that it comes with because you're going to have your own helmet, you're going to have your own gloves, you're going to have your own supplies for that kind of stuff. The only thing you're going to need is a welder. The little cheapy stuff that comes in these welders isn't really useful. You'll probably use it for a couple times and then you completely waste it. So if you're going to buy a set of gloves, buy a set of better more flexible good gloves and if you're going to buy a helmet go ahead and buy yourself a good helmet. The next thing I want to say about this welder is that it says 130 amps. Most of these welders are within like 90 and 130 amps. You can go ahead especially on these Chinese machines you can go ahead and ignore the amp rating because typically the numbers on the Chinese machines tend to be a little bit more inflated so the more important thing is whether or not it can actually do what you need it to do. Typical hobbyists they weld exhaust, they weld fences, they weld doors, they weld pretty basic stuff and anything above 90 amps should be more than enough for you to do whatever you got to do and even under 90 amps should be more than enough so this is going to be the cheapest one on our list. For the second welder, we are on the Yes Welder website. This is a 135 amp, 110 volt gasless MIG welder. It looks like you can do both MIG and stick on this machine, so not necessarily just one or the other, which is nice. In case you want to learn how to do stick, you have the option to. This has the two dials up in the front, just like I had asked you guys to look for. So you have voltage on the left, we have wire speed or amps on the right. And on the bottom you can see where you can put in the stick, you can put the plus and you can put the minus, and then the connector for the trigger. If you look at the back side, it doesn't have any kind of connections for gas. It's just a straight panel with an on and off switch. I have the larger like 220 amp machine and it's a really nice machine. I like the way that it's packaged. The boxes are really nice. The gun is actually really nice. I like it more than the one that was on my Omni Pro. So this is a good welder. This comes in at $179. That's probably close to $20 more than the previous welder. But moving on to the third welder, it is also another Yes welder. What's weird about this one is that it also says that it's 135 amps. It's also a MIG welder. It's also 110 volts and it's MIG tick and stick allegedly but it doesn't show a picture of what you can connect to on the back side. So I'm assuming it's a typo that it can't actually do TIG. So if, and for all intents and purposes, this is the same machine as the one that's sold on the Yes Welder website, but this one's not on the Yes Welder website for some reason. What's cool about this machine is that although they look like they're almost pretty much identical, this one comes in black. And I kind of like the way it looks in black compared to the teal one that was on the website. And, but the problem is that this one's $10 more. 
So for all intents and purposes, it's the same welder as the previous one, but this one's at $189. Moving on to the next one. This one's uh, a newer brand. I've actually just did a video on this brand. I did their plasma cutter, and I was impressed with their plasma cutter. Their dials were pretty solid, and it's a pretty decent machine. I did tend to like it. This one is a dual voltage. Like I mentioned before, we're only worried about the 110. Allegedly, this is a 160 amp machine, but I don't know if that's 160 amps max or on the 220. So we're going to ignore the amp value, just like I mentioned before. This machine has double dials up in the front, just like I asked you guys. It's got voltage, it's got amps for wire speed, so we're all good there. It has a nice gun, it's got a nice sheath, it's got the ground clamp. The deal about this one is that it's not capable of running a stick, just like the Yes Welder machine, so that's kind of a detriment to everything. But on the plus side, it is a dual voltage machine, which means that if it caps out at a certain voltage at 110, if you have a 220 plug available and you need a little bit of extra more penetration, you can go ahead and swap it over to the 220 and then run even higher voltage through it. This welder comes in at $199, which is essentially $20 more than the Yes Welder welder, but this one has a dual voltage capability. If that's important to you, take a look at this welder. If it's not, go ahead and ignore it. Moving on to our fifth welder, we are looking at the Easy Flux 125 by Harbor Freight. This one is allegedly 125 amps. If we look at the front, it's got the two dials, it's got the gun, it's got the ground clamp. If we look at the back side, it doesn't have anything for you to plug gas into, so it's 100% only a flux core machine. You can't run any kind of stick on this like you could on the Yes Welder. The deal with this one is that it's $214, basically $215 plus tax. What's nice about this is that you can pick this up at pretty much any Harbor Freight. What's nice is that, is that you can actually pick up the warranty and go to any Harbor Freight and get this exchange in case you guys didn't have any problems. I know a lot of people that run the titanium welders and they haven't had any kind of issues. For all intents and purposes, this will weld exactly the same as a Yes welder, as a Warking, as a Vever. It's probably going to weld exactly the same but it's just the name brand, the packaging, and where you're getting it from. But you can get warranty plans on Amazon as well, but if you want something a little bit more close to home, something you can get right away, you can go to any Harbor Freight, pick this up for $215. Those were our five welders, but we've got two honorable mentions. One of them is this Forney Easy Weld 261. It is a 140 amp machine. It's flux core, 120 volts. It's green. It's got two dials in the front. It's got the gun and it's got the ground, just like with all the other welders that we've been looking at earlier today. The reason it's an honorable mention is not because it's like $20 more than the Harbor Freight one, but it's because it's Forney. Forney is actually a really common brand. You see it in a lot of home centers. They sell wire, they sell sticks. It's a very well-known brand. It's been around for a long time. I'm sure their welder welds pretty good. What's nice about this is that they have an Amazon special where you can get the welder and the helmet. And the helmet at Harbor Freight's like $45 or $50 on its own. This one seems to be a lot nicer than the Harbor Freight one. So, so for the bundle at $292, you'll get a helmet and you'll get a welder. And basically the only plus side to this, it's a brand that has been around for a really long time. A lot of people know it. I'm sure it's going to weld fine. It should be an inverter style welder. So it means it should weld exactly the same as the other five welders that we looked at. And it's just another option that you can look at in case you're looking for a more quote unquote brand name machine. And our last welder we're going to be looking at is the Sentry. This is a Sentry FC90, so it's a 90 amp welder. Sentry is kind of like, it's Lincoln, but it's not Lincoln if that makes sense. But it is Lincoln. Lincoln owns the rights to Sentry. If we look at the front, we have the two dials, just like I said before. Uh, we have the voltage and we have the wire speed. If we look at the back side, it, it doesn't have anything for you to plug into a gas bottle. What's nice about this machine is that it's quote unquote a higher end machine. It's from a even bigger, more well-known brand. The price is a little bit higher at $269. So the difference between the cheapest welder that we were looking at and the most expensive welder we were looking at has been about $100. So if you have an extra $100, maybe it's worth it to switch over to the Sentry. But if you guys want to save those $100 and maybe spend it on gloves, maybe spend it on a new helmet, I'd much rather do that than try to you know play the brand name game because if they're using Sentry as the cheaper version of Lincoln that means it's probably all made in China also and it's probably no better than the ones that we were looking at earlier today I put all of these welders in the description of this video let me know if you guys would actually buy one of these welders in the comments below I will see you guys all in the next one Night Wrencher out